All right, we are in the museum section now, and this is the introduction to Gaudi. And that's Gaudi himself. And actually, from I was told incorrectly during the tour that he spent 12 years. Gaudi devoted 43 years of his life to this project. And this chronology, timeline chronology goes through when the project started, how it started, given that this has been funded strictly by donations and not by the government. It has taken its time to build. This is when Gaudi passed away in a tram accident. Then there were fires in the timeline of how this has been built. So this is where we stand today. Sure, I'm sure COVID slowed it down. And that's Pope Benedictine, Benedict, sorry, visiting in 2010. And this facade, passion facade was completed after I visited the first time. <laughs> He took a string, he took these little, little sandbags, and then he created the structure to see how the weight could hold. And this is the upside down version of this basilica. So it took him a long time to come up with the exact weight that can be put in each one of those columns. And if you think about it, in those days, there were no computers, there was no AutoCAD, there were no modern day tools. So this is, if you flip it, there you go. That's the upside down of the Basilica model. Based on that, he knew how to go ahead and come up with his actual model. This is amazing as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this has been preserved and kept nicely for the last 100 plus years. Now this section describes how this model that we saw earlier was used now to build these different sections of the Sagrada Familia. and or which architect or which century. So if you see, the first part was used the 1890. The second part was used in 19, early 1900s. And then the remaining section was used right here, 1921, 1923. This is again more of a detailed timeline of each one of those project sections of how it came about, you know, what kind of work was done, how long it took, the challenges faced. And you know, they created prototypes at first. Yes. You can see the pinnacles is the crown on top of each tower. and how and why they have built those. Some of the tools that have been used, and I think that's the big bell.
these are pictures from some of the more recent events from last year. And this is the workshop, the way it stands now with all these different models. And that's the weight thing that we looked at earlier. Right really cool. This is just going through some of you know, folks who have promoted the temple and taken care of its management over the time. There are different replicas. And here again are towers for the apostles. And it's each one of these apostles. The replica of the tower that has been built for them. And this is the replica of the pinnacle tower, which is for Virgin Mary. Again, this is one of the models built in this workshop before it's translated into the main structure. So now we are in line to get to the tower and we have the Ascension Tower, not the Passion Site. So these elevators that have been created to the tower are an afterthought because you know 100 plus years ago there was no elevator that was factored into the plan. So this has very limited capacity and it takes you up to the tower but coming down you got to take the stairs. And it's 300 steps coming down. So even after the elevator, there are still steps to climb, very, very narrow. Uh, this reminds me <laughs> of uh, the climb that I had to do in Italy, in Florence, for the tower. Those are 450 steps up. Oh, it is windy up here. magnificent views and you can see the city of Barcelona so this is 60 meters up and this is connecting two separate towers so this is one of those towers that has been built so if you see that that's the tower Magnificent. Ideally, they do not want you to spend more than 10 12 minutes up here. And it does take around 15 20 minutes to go down because these are actually 400 steps. And when you go down, it spirals. As you can see, it's all the way down. 